Hey folks, it's Muck. The internet's been home to many horrible, horrible things. It's no surprise. When you give people a platform to say whatever they want to potential audiences of millions anonymously, nothing's gonna get held back. They will dump out the most vile, disgusting thoughts they've ever conceived. This isn't exclusive to places like 4chan, however. You can also find plenty of examples of this phenomenon on websites like Reddit. Reddit has faced plenty of criticism for their moderation. Obviously, there are the thousands of memes about Reddit moderators, but this isn't a problem with them. This time, at least. Feel free to watch a video of mine on that after this one. But anyways, the problem I'm going to tell you about today is about the actual Reddit employees. First, I should actually tell you the problem. Reddit is a huge website and nearly completely clueless on what subreddits to ban and what subreddits to keep, as demonstrated by pedophilia subreddits surviving for far longer than they should in other horrible subreddits being alive to this day. Hell, the r slash meth subreddit is up to this day and it's literally filled with people just smoking meth and endorsing its usage. So many subreddits are banned that there are entire subreddits dedicated to tracking which subreddits are banned. Hell, I have to use the Wayback Machine to make half of these fucking Reddit videos because nearly everything's banned now. Even the subreddit r slash banned, which was dedicated towards spreading information on the censorship, was taken down. Ironic. We're not going too broad with the issue of Reddit censorship today, maybe I'll make a video on that later. What I'm going to talk about today is the subreddit r slash pedo friends and how it stayed alive on the site for much longer than it should have. r slash pedo friends was created as a place to offer support for pedophiles who do not abuse children. They use some different language, however, like instead of calling pedophiles pedophiles, they often refer to them as MAPs or minor attracted persons, and pro-contact or non-contact MAPs are pedophiles who do or do not have sexual relations with children. You may hear this and think, huh, calling a pedophile who rapes children a pro-contact minor attracted person seems like it's downplaying the abuse at the victim's face. What, do you think I'm going to argue? No, that's spot on. This is weird as hell. Let me read you the description for the subreddit. Welcome to a place for non-offending pedophiles and allies to make friends with each other. What this place is, a place for support, a place for discussion of pedophilia, a place to make friends, pedophiles or not, a place to make allies. What this place isn't, a place for illegal activities, a place for illegal content, a place to advocate for or describe child abuse, and a place for bullying or trolling. Now listen. I'm all for polite and respectful discussion on most subjects, but on the topic of pedophilia, how much can be said? Child pornography is obviously incredibly exploitative and immoral. Relationships between full adults and children always have horrible imbalances of power and are also horribly immoral. Even in the situation of pedophiles who don't abuse children, there's not much discussion to be had. If you are a pedophile, who doesn't watch child porn or have romantic or sexual relations with children, you're not off the hook yet. You also have to not go around talking about it. Just because you haven't sexually exploited the children doesn't mean you've acted completely correctly. Let me offer an analogy. If you were at the bar with a woman who wants nothing to do with you sexually or otherwise, would you continue to yell to everyone in the room about how badly you want to fuck her? Hopefully not. Even if you follow it up with, I feel guilty about it, it's creepy and you don't do it. You shut your mouth. In the same way, pedophiles on Reddit shouldn't be posting publicly to many, many people about how they really want to have sex with children and how they've watched child porn in the past, because in the event that a child comes across a post like this, they would probably be horrified. Or worse, they could become desensitized to the idea and maybe even come to accept it as normal. So what discussion needs to be had on this topic? None, right? Well, that doesn't stop the people on the subreddit. Here's a post from the subreddit entitled Arguments For and Against Pedophilia. This post was intended to open up discussion on pedophilia, both from people who support child molestation and people who don't. There's plenty of incredibly disturbing stuff in the comments of this post, and stuff that shows the issue with this subreddit being created in the first place. For example, this user named Your Daughter's a Cutie took a study completely out of context and used it to say that in all statistical cases, children with a sexual partner fare better than children without a sexual partner. 
They also said that anyone who was against young children having sexual partners were just spoon-fed the easy answer. By the way, the person they're talking to is a human services worker who frequently and consistently works with distraught children who have been sexually abused. Another guy jumps in here saying that sexual abuse has a protective effect. The study they're talking about ranks how different forms of abuse and neglect affects children's enjoyment of life, and sexual abuse affected the children the least, according to the study. It should also be noted that sexual abuse and consensual sex were lumped together as the same thing. So I would really take this study with a few thousand grains of salt. Not to mention that the measured enjoyment of life is based on just asking the kids, so it's not shocking that they might say they enjoyed having sex more than being yelled at at their parents, but this definitely doesn't mean it was better for them. There's this guy who says that there isn't a power imbalance between adults and children, even when it comes to adults manipulating children sexually, because children are often very forceful with their opinions and hard to convince to do things. Obviously a blanket statement that doesn't apply to all children, not to mention that just because the child may want to have sex does not mean that it's not abusive. They don't understand. On account of them being a child, just because they say yes doesn't mean no harm has been done. This guy also says manipulation of children isn't a bad thing because sometimes parents manipulate children into stuff like eating their vegetables and getting vaccines. You know, the things they need to be healthy. This guy admits to having a quote-unquote relationship with an 11-year-old girl and only broke it off because her friends at school were starting to tease her. He also says that the age of consent is crazy high. There's a lot of discussion on the age of consent among these people. Some even think it should be completely voided. No age of consent. That means a 5-year-old and a 40-year-old, as long as the 5-year-old says yes, can have intercourse completely legally. There would be literally no way to stop it. Genuinely horrifying. This argument is completely idiotic. In response to someone saying that children who believe in fairy tales and eat their own snot aren't able to consent, this guy said, How about adults who believe in God and eat their own snot? In fact, eating your snot is better than not eating it. It's a way your body uses to adapt to bacteria in the environment. Studies found that children as young as 5 or 6 are capable of giving informed consent for medical procedures, provided they are explained in a way the child can understand. The classic Reddit atheist argument of just calling religious people idiots, and for the snot thing, there's not one singular 5-year-old who eats their own snot because they want to adapt to bacteria in the environment. They're not making that decision because of that information, whether it be true or not. They're making that decision because they're 5 years old. There's nothing wrong with simply discussing a subject in most cases, but on this subreddit the discussions were not simply discussions. Within these posts and threads, there were pedophiles advocating for societal acceptance of adult-child quote-unquote relationships, advocating for the lowering or elimination of the age of consent, advocating for child molestation. So you're probably wondering now, why the hell was this subreddit not taken down within a day. Why was this up and available for anyone with an electronic device in a public library to steal internet from to access? It was taken down after some controversy with the r slash the donald subreddit. The donald was a pro-trump subreddit and in 2016 the pizzagate subreddit was taken down. If you're not familiar with the pizzagate conspiracy it was the false claim that when emails involving hillary clinton were leaked there was information that linked many Democratic Party members to a child sex and trafficking ring in several U.S. restaurants, including a pizza place. Not grounded in evidence whatsoever, so don't worry about it. The point is that the subreddit dedicated to this conspiracy was banned, and the The Donald subreddit was pissed off about it. So, in an effort to get the subreddit back and point out the hypocrisy of Reddit, they pointed out that the Pedo Friends subreddit was not banned despite its content. In response, Reddit finally banned the subreddit. The moderators and community of the subreddit were greatly angered. One moderator said, What are we supposed to do now? Where are we to go? Why couldn't you just let us be? We just wanted a place to belong where someone understood. Why did you have to burn down all the progress we've been making? A monologue that could be deemed sympathetic if it wasn't explicitly allowing pro-child molestation discussion to take place. Though the belief that pedophilia is wrong is fairly widespread, there is truth in the statement that pedophiles cannot control who they are attracted to. Obviously, this doesn't mean that they have any right to act on this attraction or even to go around talking about it, but it also doesn't mean that the pedophiles who do not act on this attraction should be praised or seen as virtuous. But let's not 
delve too deep into the immorality of pedophilia, I feel that the vast majority of it should go without saying. Instead, why was pedophriends a horrible idea? When you get a bunch of people around with similar experiences or views, for example, an attraction of minors, especially a bunch of people who have been ostracized for their views, they're probably not going to talk to each other about how disgusting their views are. Some will and some do, but very few people are willing to accept that there is a deeply flawed, perhaps even evil, part of them. This part doesn't make them evil, they can still resist this part of them, but this part exists and needs to be ignored. This is an incredibly sensitive subject, which is why a public reddit forum is a horrible place to discuss it. It should be discussed in private with a therapist, and ideally nowhere else, ever. Pedo friends, though it may have been intended to just provide a place of support for non-defending pedophiles, allowed expression of what they would call pro-contact beliefs. It turned into a place of support for all of pedophilia, a place where people would try and shove their attraction to minors under the LGBTQ plus umbrella, much to the disdain of people who are actually under that umbrella, a place where people would share how to find child porn, a place where people would spread pro-pedophilia ideas, and a place where someone impressionable and gullible could easily become convinced that pedophilia is normal, and adult-child relationships don't cause any damage. And that is the true harm of pedo friends. Alright, thank you for watching all the way till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. This one doesn't really have many jokes in it, so sorry about that. But I think it's an interesting issue, and I figured it would be interesting to talk about. Please do leave a comment, tell me what you like or don't like seeing in my videos, help me out a bit, join the Discord if you want to say something, leave a like, subscribe, you know the drill. Thank you very much for being here, and have a good one. Thank you.